Yo, what is going on guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to a brand new episode of Rogue to High Rated. Here we are in episode 5 and we've got another match versus Sword Soul. Obviously yours truly is piling the Speedroid deck as sort of my Rogue deck of choice currently. And uh, my current rating at the start of the video is 827. Uh, so we're about, you know, in the low 800s. Working our way up slowly through the 800s and hopefully into the 900s. Our first big milestone with the series, I think, is going to be probably about the 1,000 rating mark. Um, I think if we can get to 1,000 rating with Speedroid, that would be very, very awesome. Very, very impressive milestone, at least in my opinion. I'll definitely take that as a nice little personal win. And I think it will also be the highest uh, rating I've ever been on Dueling Books. So that's a huge uh, you know, thing as well. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, no master duel, uh, you know, uh, format here, which uh, feels so good because, uh, and a little bit of a side note here, that format is absolutely awful, and I hate playing competitive uh, on that format with, you know, three max C calamities, and uh, it's just an awful ban list. One vanity's emptiness, but uh, feels good to be back on DB after uh, playing some master duel in that weird fake format. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and hop right into it here. And, uh, yeah, obviously we're playing against Sword Soul, as I already mentioned, and, um, I think the first episode we did of this series also had, um, Sword Soul in it there, and I, uh, let that go a little bit too far, but our opening hand here was Valor, Imperm, Ash, uh, Wheel, and Duke, and our opponent opened up Chalice, Order, Droplet, Ecclesia, and Vishuda. Um, yeah, I mean, as we go higher up in the ladder, we're gonna start seeing, you know, kind of the same decks over and over again. Uh, we may still see some few uh, like oddball decks in there um, that are definitely you know at the top because there's definitely some interesting decks that still get up to high rated. Um, I think there's like one person that's like top ten that just plays only ABC. So you know it could be we could be playing against anything, right? Uh, as we continue to climb higher. Um, so yeah, he obviously has some uh, decent going first hand, decent going second hand as well. A shoot a droplet, chalice, right? Tons of going second stuff. And my hand is pretty fragile here. Um, with Wheel Duke, obviously my only way to play it, I need to roll a 3 or higher uh, to be able to do so. So we can roll a 3, 4, 5, or 6 and be able to play if we roll a 1 or a 2. We're out of luck, but, you know, we do have Ash, Valor, Imperm. So even if this does not go in our favor here, even if my opponent were to Ash this and end my turn, you know, I feel like not terrible because I have 3 interruptions in hand. Um, and it could be worse, right? Like I could just have like 3 Marble Machines in my hand um, or, you know... Uh, two butterflies and a rubber band plane, right? It could be really bad, but at least we have something going for us here. We're going to go ahead and roll off the wheel, and uh, what do I roll here? We roll a four, so exactly uh, in the range of what we needed here. A three would have worked, four, five, or six, obviously, and uh, we're going to go ahead and summon out a duke and a uh, dice here. I don't know specifically why I decided to summon another duke here. I guess I was uh, I wanted to make sure I had follow-up after this turn since I didn't open up super well so having an extra duke and grave was going to be really nice to do that could have also summoned a hound here just to get you know the hound follow up and grave could have summoned a card turbo as another level three tuner to be able to revive off of the duke later in the turn because obviously can't revive duke off of duke um so we're going to keep moving on here and obviously we're going to go ahead and link two and two rubber band shooter and this is one of those hands as well like um yeah if the, like this this hand is super fragile obviously if you couldn't tell very, very fragile hand here. Um, one hand trap, pretty much at any point, is going to stop us. And luckily, our opponent doesn't have that. But he does have three good board-breaking cards in his hand. Um, so we're going to go ahead and banish a five here. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and reveal the Marble Machine and the Terror Top alongside of it. We do get the Marble Machine here, which is actually what I would have rather have gotten at this point, since I have a Duke set up in Grave. Um, and this is going to allow us to make, like, Crystal Wing... Uh, much easier. That's one of the reasons why I like Marble Machine a lot. Sometimes over Terror Top, especially if you have Recovery in Hand, like I've already talked about in the series, because um, we can make you know Hogoita being a level two, and if we get this, you know we're kind of forced to add Tech of Tomborg and then you know tag for dice and do like Cork Shooter plays if we want to end on some you know boss monsters like Crystal Wing or Baron even. Um, that forces us to like not have dice uh you know out of the deck already so we wouldn't be able to do it this hand it'd be a little awkward if we got the terror top if we got the terror top here i think the play would have been to have like summon tech of tomborg and like uh tag out for piper um and then reveal two and then we duke out the dice and uh possibly do like a cork shooter line and make 
Yeah, we do a corkshooter line. I gotta think this out now, because this actually wouldn't be too bad. Do a corkshooter line. We bring back the dice and the terror top. Dice would make the terror top a four. We'd sink our Hagoita, and then Crystal Wing, and then Hagoita brings itself back, makes Shen Shen. We'd end in Crystal Wing Shen Shen if we got this, but I think this is just gonna get us double Crystal Wing here. No Piper reveal, unless I actually decide to go for the Piper because I could here. Um, and I have the Duke Engraved. So we'd go Piper for two, Charge Warrior into Baron. Um, but I think I am going to go for the bit of a riskier play here. Um, because we did not use our normal summon to get into rubber band shooter. So we could just normal summon, regular normal summon uh, our marble machine there. And I decided to get a little bit uh, risky here and go for the um, the Rordon route. And I guess I want to do this because I wanted to dig deeper into maybe some you know more extenders. Um, since our opening hand was a little rough. And I figured at this point, I, I mean, this is super greedy. Uh, I guess game one, if I'm going to do a play like this, like this is the game to do it. Game one, when I have no idea what I'm playing against, um, right? And my opponent may not know what my deck does. But like at this point, like if I started with wheel, starting off trying to, you know, potentially go minus two to an ash, and then he doesn't hit our link two, um, I feel, you know, maybe at this point, maybe he doesn't have anything. But uh, obviously, you get very, very punished if he did. And, you know, we at least still have three hand traps as backup. So, um,. Could have definitely done a much safer play here, but I decided to... I remember thinking specifically here that this, like, could very easily get punished. Um, but luckily my opponent did not have the punish. We do find a recovery and an imperm. I do decide to take the recovery here since I already have three hand traps in hand. And, uh, taking any more would probably be a little bit greedy. And I think this is the risky route that ends up getting us the sort of the best of both worlds. We get Baron here and we recover back the, uh, Terra Top. Now, this is where summoning a car turbo off that wheel would have been better because i wouldn't need to bring back the terror top here i could just recovery back the car and then synchro six for a charge wear and then duke out the car and make shen shen and it's basically all the same but yeah you can kind of see that this is going to be the best of both worlds here like uh we would have gotten crystal wing shen shen if we would have got the terror top but going this route allows me to potentially get the baron uh a big piper reveal and also get access to shen shen and of course the charge warrior draw so uh, very, very nice um, opening here. We draw into a second Ash, which is not terrible here. It's pretty okay against the Sword Soul deck. Just good in general, stopping Fusion Destinies and other things like that. And uh, we're going to go ahead and duke out uh, that card turbo we got off the Terror Top and go for a Shen Shen and set a card and pass, obviously being the Imperm there. And uh, yeah, he's going to top deck a Blackout. He's going to leave with a Chalice. I'm like, that's fine. No reason to try to negate there. It's going to be basically Droplet Bait at that point. Um, my opponent's going to start with the Ecclesia. Activate his effect, and I go ahead and Ash that, because uh, he did... Well, he didn't normal summon there, but... I, I felt okay doing that, strictly because if he had a normal summon like Mo Yi, I had an Imperm and a Veiler to go ahead and stop it. Um, so he wasn't going to be able to play through that just by baiting out an Ash like that. He is going to spec out the Vashuda there, but obviously um, the Shen Shen is still online. Um, so if you were to link that off, it would get banished and you wouldn't be able to do the play he wanted to. Um, the other thing too there that's weird, like, he could have dropleted it as well, like, to turn off the Shen Shen. I don't know exactly why he didn't. Um, yeah, I don't know, because he could have definitely dropleted to turn off the Shen Shen. He would have had to do a pitch like a trap or something. Um, obviously wouldn't be able to send off of field because of Shen Shen, and, you know, the card you send for droplet have to hit the grave, so... Yeah, we take that one very, very uh, easily there. We win die roll, obviously. We didn't get hand trapped, so of course it's going to go in our favor. And here we are in game two. We open up Terra Top, Red Eye Die, Ash, Marble, and Wheel. So a much better hand here than in the previous one. We definitely have more than one way to play. My opponent opens up Circle, Shatana, uh, the Vashuda, the Ash, and an Imperm. So two going second cards, technically three here. Not a whole lot of engine, though, to uh, start things off. He is going to lead with Vashuda, and he will spec that to the field. And he's going to immediately go ahead and activate the Heavenly Dragon Circle. Um, he is going to be able to try to search out like a Mo Yi or something here. And I see him basically going for this, you know, it's potentially a minus two right if I ash this. Um, it's the same thing if I go wheel, pitch a card, my opponent wants to ash that nice one for two trade. So I see this and I'm like, you know what, if he has a normal summon um, to, to sort of back this up, then so be it. I don't have a way to stop a normal summon anyways, so... I might as well let him go minus two while I can. Uh, and then he's going to inspect out the Tenny Spirit Shatana. And I think he just sets that and uh, actually goes ahead and passes turn. Um, 
yeah, we end up top decking a duplicate. Not the greatest draw, but it can be a nice discard here for the uh, wheel to act as an extender. We're going to spec out the Terra Top. My opponent's going to make the mistake of actually hitting with an Imperm now. It's not totally a mistake, right? This, this is my only starter, and he Impermed it. Like, yeah, good. But, like, you're banking on it being the only starter when I have four other cards in hand. We normal the Marble Machine. My opponent's like, hmm, we'll go ahead and Ash that. Very, very, you know, poor choice there because, like, even if I didn't have any other extenders in my hand, I could actually just go ahead and, you know, link these off for a rubber band shooter uh, and then reveal, like, Car Turbo and Tekka Tomborg um, or Hound and Tekka Tomborg, right? And try to keep playing from there and make, like, just play right through those hand traps, like, just completely done at incorrect points. Um, if anything, he was going to save that Ash for something like Tekka Tomborg because I still think that's, like, the best Ash in the deck, one of the best Ashes. Um, and I'm luckily, you know, here I did not uh, discard the dice uh, because I would have gotten punished. Like, I, I feel like dice hates me so much that I, I, I respect it enough now uh, to never discard him off wheel. And as much as I wanted to hold the duplicate because it is pretty good against this particular matchup, I figured, you know what? Um, I'd rather not take 500 here and not special summon uh, than keep this duplicate. So we're going to go ahead and, and it, it'll act as a, an extender right now in Grave 2. We do ahead and spec that out from the hand here, and we're going to go ahead and Synchro 3 into Cork Shooter. And uh, I think I, yeah. So this was a bit of a siding error on my part. I sided out a gate, actually, which I was trying to experiment with doing going second, you know, siding out one copy of gate alongside of the three speed recoveries in place of just more hand traps. I don't really want to draw a trap like duplicate going second, um, especially two, right? So if I leave just one in the deck, it's not so bad because it can be kind of helpful in a situation like this and act as a nice extender. Um, so I go ahead and actually just search another wheel, which isn't terrible because like having wheel on the crack back is also just nice as well. We're going to go ahead and link two here into the rubber band shooter. Now that I've exhausted both Marble Machine and Terror Top, it makes this uh, rubber band shooter a little awkward. Of course, we do have the, you know, the Hound as an option. I banished the six here to obviously try to get Hound and take a Tomborg. And I think, I think I would really prefer to get the Hound here. Um... Yeah, getting Hound here would be really nice, I believe. Yeah, I mean, also getting Tekatomborg would work too, um, because what I could do is I could spec the Tekatomborg and duplicate it down to level 2, then make a Roradon, then tag into Piper, reveal 4, Synchro Baron, because um, we have not used our additional normal summon yet with the Roar Band Shooter, we're just using that effect there. So uh, I think getting, getting the Hound here actually is the worst option, honestly. And we get the Tech Town Board. Let's see if I make that play here. So I, I, I guarantee I don't make this play. Yeah, see, I don't make this play here. This is interesting that I don't. Um, I guess it also... Yeah, so, I mean, this this play... See, it's always interesting to watch these replay, replays back. Because when you look at it again, you know, a couple days later, you're like, wow, I could have done that play there. I could have duplicated the Tech Town Board down, linked for Aurorodon with the gate and the... Uh, the rubber band shooter, and then tagged out Tekatomborg for uh, the the Piper, resolved it for four. You know, that maybe finds me a hand trap for whatever top deck he's going to have, and also secures me Baron. And I'd have a token left over, so I could set wheel, and Aurorodon, well, hmm. Aurorodon does tribute for cost, so I'd have to pop three other cards anyways. Um, hmm. Well, I'd have to actually reread uh, Rordon just to double check something here. But what you're going to see here is also just going to work anyways, too. Um, so, yeah, we're going to link into a Rordon, summon the tokens here, and I'm just going to read Rordon's text. Um, yeah, tributes for a cost, and then based on how many tribute, right? Um, yeah, tribute up to three months. Okay, so you can't. I couldn't set the wheel anyways. I don't know why I thought I could do that for a second. I was going to say maybe there's a, a way where, like, I. Um, Tribute off the word on the token and one of the random monster to possibly add back the gate and grave. That would be really good. Having Baron and then just adding back a gate too on top of that. But we're going to take, take good advantage here of our word on anyways. Because we're going to use a second effect and summon out Tetherwolf from the extra or from the main deck. Who's actually a level 7 right now because we have a uh, level 3 token on field. And he'll gain the level of that token. Then we're going to duke out the Cork Shooter. And we're going to Synchro 10 for Baron. And uh, Baron's going to pop the Shadana. He's going to take a look at his top deck. Um, and he is going to uh, scoop right then and there. And we take the match 2-0. 
Um, yeah, I mean, not really a whole lot he can do there since um, he's... Yeah, like a top deck uh, emergence is good, but not into a Baron, obviously. Um, and then standby phase on my next turn, I could just Baron target Terror Top, bring it back, Terror Top search Marble, make double Crystal Wing, and basically just go for the OTK uh, right then and there. So yeah, that is going to do it for this match. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. If you want to see more of my content, click on one of the videos popping up on the bottom of the screen right now. And as always, we're going to kill Santa out. See you guys in the next one. And like always, a special shout out goes to our Divine Level channel members, and they are Cadillacs84, Tweeter0226, Pony Stark, Keith Sidgers, and Black Ninja Money. Thank you guys so much, as always, for your extremely generous support of this channel.